week five of my free to play account was so much fun. It came up with some difficult decisions. Difficult decisions. Let's say difficult decisions. Let's hop into it. There is a difference between you and me. We both looked into the abyss. But when it looked back at us, you blinked. Hi guys, I'm Gravy here, and this is a DC Legends video. In this video, I'm going through my free-to-play account, week number five. Um, there were some exciting things that happened, some things that I actually had to do um, that I didn't necessarily expect to do in the account, but you know, it, it, it is what it is. So basically, what I'm going to do is, and as I stumble into this intro into what I was doing, I'm going to go ahead and give you what I did with Punchline, and then just move down the roster backwards to, to show you what I've been doing. Punchline, I've taken R, or taken um, L3. She's my first L3 tune, as that's pre pre pretty clear to see. Um, what I would recommend in this situation, though, is I'm going to leave her at level 45 because she's already the strongest tune there, and I want to keep her power level relatively close to the other tunes. So I'm going to have to stack those tunes up a little bit, get their power levels up a little bit so they can catch up with her game. game. So, like, right now, the goal is, and I think what I'm going to stop the account at is level 59. So... For those of you that don't know, level 50 gear 9 is what I'm going to aim for for my top 12 tunes while managing their um, their power levels to be sure that they're all within each other. Right now, I'm not exactly happy that I took her legendary or L3 only because now her power level is at 3400 and that creates a pretty, for what I'm trying to do, that creates a pretty big gap between my highest level tune and the lowest one that I use at the moment, which is Flash. However... Um, Talon was actually the key to me getting past that node in the punchline event. Got Talon from Siege, worked my butt off, and got him to R5. I cannot wait for that PvP event in four weeks at the end of April to have Talon so I can go ahead and get some more of his frags and I'll be able to take him in on one. Um, so that was a good look, but I immediately, once I got his frags, I saw that he was a bonus tune in the punchline event, so I immediately just dumped as many of the resources that I had available in him. Like just as soon as I could, I was able to two star the second to last node with a team of, and it's not like it really matters, but with a team of Jesse Quick, I used Arsenal. Arsenal's being used because Jesse Quick gives the evasion up. So if we have the chance of being missed, then Arsenal will attack. Punchline, of course, she's my strongest tune. Plus that disease looms large in the game for PVE, especially when you're trying to progress. And then Talon as well, having that uh, bonus of 250% uh, health helped a lot. All right, so now we're going back. So that was how I dealt with Punchline and then how I dealt with Talon. I'm going to develop Talon a fair amount because I love him on my main account. So I'm going to try to get him up to speed on my free-to-play account. Once I get him L1, then I'll be much more comfortable putting resources into him. I'm going to put a little bit into him right now. Maybe take him 50. Maybe take him level 50, but we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Punchline. Also, one thing I did want to make note of. Legendary order. I'm going to try to start doing this a little bit differently because legendary order, if you're really, really early in the game, to me, what I figured out is that you need to focus more on survivability than damage, or at least that's my philosophy. So with her A1, that was the first legendary I took, I believe. Let me double check this to be on the safe side. Yeah. The, oh, wait. Yeah, that was the first legendary I took. Then the second one I would recommend now before... I was going to say, let's go over to the other legendary orders real quick. Before in-game player, I would recommend taking the A4P1, the also applied buff immunity when an ally gets hit. However, if you are early game and you have punchline, which this advice might be coming too late, but if you are early game and have punchline, then I would actually recommend taking the uh, P2A5 as your second legendary because you want to start off with invisibility, empower, stamina up, that helps with survivability. That helps, you know, protect you when something's going to come at you because then it won't come at you. You're invisible. Then you can go ahead and go forward. And then the next one would be the the buff immunity. I'm no longer no longer farming her frags because put it this way, I have enough frags on my main account to take her L4, maybe L no L4, and I'm not going to. I'm leaving her at L3. I think L3 is her spe sweet spot. So I'm happy to get her L3 here. And then not even go after a frags anymore, not wasting the energy on that anymore. I have what I want, so I stopped. Now, uh, moving on down the list, uh, where are we at? Where are we at? Where are we at? Oh, yeah, yeah. That's what it was. Catwoman. 
So the Catwoman event, I have been able to get to the second to last node of her normal event. And that is because as I did not pay close enough attention, you have a limited number of tunes that you, oh, 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 go back, that's a legendary one. You have a limited number of tunes. There's a limited selection of tunes that you have. And the tunes that I have to this point, we'll just go ahead and go in there. The tunes that I have to this point that I can actually use are Eclipso, <laughs> Raz Al Ghul, Mr. Freeze, I literally leveled up on Saturday to help me with this event. And then Zatanna, Mr. Freeze was a tune that I was gonna work on in the distant, few, well distant, like in a few weeks. I had other tunes that were more important, but because I really wanted Catwoman, I went ahead, put some resources into him. He's R3 right now, few gears and everything. He's at level 3000, so that's a decent level for me. Try to help me get through it. I might even try to level him up a little bit more. Eclipse a little bit more. Roz a little bit more. Today is Monday. So actually what I might do is put some gears into Eclipso and Roz. I have some gems. So I can go ahead and farm this event. Uh, the Mystic event over here for today. So I'll probably do that. Gear them up a little bit. Then try to finish that last node of the normal uh, for the Catwoman event. So that way I think I'll be able to take her R5 at that point. Hopefully. Hopefully I'll be able to take her R5 at that point. And then, like, I really need to do all this filter. I have like 20 of them. I'll be, oh, whoop, 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 whoop. I may not be able to take her R5. I get 50 from that. And then I'll need 10 more. I'll have to find 10 Catwoman frags from somewhere. But I do want to have Catwoman up to R5. I would love to have her L1, to be quite frank. But that's not going to happen because I don't believe, just because of the way that my teams have been built and what I've been trying to do, given the selective nature or like the select the select characters that you are allowed to use, I can't put Lex in. Lex is the main reason why I can punch uh, up. I can take out teams that are twice my power level because of how I structured everything around Lex and I can't use him in this event so I'm kind of screwed <laughs> so let's just be let's just be real about it I'm kind of screwed I can't do anything with it so I just have to I just have to let it go now today as well what I'm going to do is red alerts as I said it's Monday the 28th red alerts we have stripe here so I think I'm going to reset this I reset the event yesterday once to get some extra vixen nodes I'm going to reset this one just one time because i'm gonna get 25 of his frags plus another 25 that'll take me up to r5 for uh stripe with eclipso and this is where i'm kind of hesitant even if i reset it three times which would give me 48 frags that would mean that i would have to do this event four times and i would have to spend six not 1800 gems in order to take eclipso r5 and then by that point yeah of course i'll have Stripe at R5, but I won't need all those extra frags. And though there's even another set of frags here for Stripe. I mean, if I reset this three and do it four times, that means I would get a legit hundred frags. I do the event four times, I would get a hundred frags of Stripe. And if I have a hundred, and what does he have right now? Sorry, I keep going back. If he has 124 frags, 90 plus is 150. Oh. So I would just be shy of taking him L1. Should I do that? I have 2,200 frags right now, or 2,200 gems right now. If I reset it three times, it's gonna cost me 1,800. I would get enough frags to take both Stripe and Eclipso R5, and then be in the position for when they come back around in the red alerts, just to have to win like one little five node, and then I could take Stripe to L1. Mm. What I will do is I'll, I'll, I'll agree to myself to reset it once. I've already said I was gonna do that. Um, I'm gonna then work on farming the gears in the Mystic event. So I can go ahead and gear up Eclipso and uh, Roz. However, if I reset the event, that'll let me take them up R5. Regardless, um, I'll go ahead and gear them up, maybe spend about 400 gems in gears to try to gear them up a little bit. That would leave me with 1,800, but then I would be I would have 92 gems left. Absolutely done. But then I would have an R5 stripe who's literally just waiting on one frag to get to, um, well, not one frag, but you know what I mean. 
Six, I think. Um, that would mean waiting for six frags to get him to L1. I would have Eclipso at R5. That would be stronger for the Catwoman event. I might do that. I might do that today. I might reset this event four times. Wow. Or three times, let's just say. Go through it four times. Oh. So, that is that. Um, but then I would have zero gems. Zero gems. Oh, wait a second. I just did this math wrong. Did you guys watch me do the math wrong on that? Did you guys watch me do the math wrong on that and nobody told me I was doing the math wrong on that? Because I have stripe down here at five and then I have the other one up here at 25. That's 30 stripe frags right there, right? So if that's 30 and he's at 124 right, and he's at 24 right now, if I reset that and I go through it four times, that means I would have 120 frags plus the 24. I would still be short. I would still be short, right? Am I doing math correct? I'm not even gonna cut this. I'm gonna let you guys watch me do bad math. So 60 plus 90 is 150, correct? Good. We all agree on that. 60 plus 90 is 150. We all agree. Now, um, 30 times 4 is 120. Plus the 24 would make 144. So I would be six, I would still be six frag shy. So I did the math right completely, or right the first time. I'd be six frag shy. Oh, that's tempting. That is tempting. All right, so I'm going to have to marinate on that. I'm going to reset it at least once. I know that much. And maybe I'll go to Decent Legends Toolkit and check the Red Alerts calendar to be sure when the next time he's going to be up is. If it's like a day or two, like if he's there tomorrow, then I can wait one day. But if it's going to be like another two weeks before I get a decent number of striped frags to be able to take him L1, then I might just go ahead and reset this thing three times. Anyway, so there's that. Now let me check my notes. Mr. Free... Oh, and actually... One thing I have been doing, and for those of you who might be having problems with Punchline, I need to start farming Wonder Woman POT a little bit more recently, or a little bit more in the coming days. I've really focused on Lex. I almost have him L1. Green Lantern, I'm just trying to get him up to R5. He's not as useful to me at the moment, at like at the moment right now because of what Punchline can do. And the woman I've been using to help me with Punchline is Wonder Woman. Why? Because Power of Truth, even at its second level, not even that high up, Purge eight debuffs from self and three debuffs from allies. Meaning, if I'm running her off lead, I don't even need her to be on lead. Run her on the team with Lex, and I get that punchline situation where I'm getting disease or I'm getting doom from chemo, I can use that ability and purge those debuffs off of me and then keep on fighting. So, and she also has the ability to transfer the, um, yeah, when taking damage, transfer a buff on Wonder Woman to a random enemy. Like, she has that as well. So, she's good at getting those buffs off of her. So I have been using her off lead a lot more under Lex to kind of help me get through some of the punchline teams, some of the chemo teams. All right, good. Glad I made that note. So now, oh, and yesterday, just an anecdotal story, and then I'll call it a video. Like, my phone had to update, and I had red alerts running, right? And then for some reason, I looked away at my phone. I looked back, I saw the notification, just clicked the notification and started the update immediately right in the middle of that one team that I use for red alerts. And here's the thing, I've said that strategy before, where I have Lex at lead and then I put as many of the tunes as I could in the middle, substitute them in. Let's go ahead and like, I'll take you over to red alerts and show you what, I was, what I'm talking about. So like in red alerts, what I'll do is I'll have my team of Lex first and then I'll put in Wonder Woman and Enchantress for the first threat. Then I'll put in uh, Arsenal and Punchline for the second threat. That's because I'm putting them in there to build up an overheal on them. That way, once they have that overheal, I can just put them back on the roster. And then as Red Alerts gets more difficult or if something just happens in the meantime and in between time and I lose this team, I'll still have eight other tunes that are fully overhealed that I can use to get through the rest of Red Alerts. Now, I had that thing happen, and of course, my Red Alerts team is abandoned because of my phone update. And it was abandoned at alert five or six. I can't remember which one exactly. I was still able to carry through with Wonder Woman POT at lead, Enchantress. Like, we still made it through and completed the Red Alerts. But I tell you that story so that you know that strategy of trying to get your tunes overhealed in the first, like, four nodes or first four threats of Red Alerts can help you out a lot if you got a, just like a real life situation that happens and your team gets abandoned you get a bug that happens or whatever whatever then that'll help you be able to complete your red alerts or at least i was going to be happy i was like 
you know what, if I can just get like three or four more nodes, get to that, get to those gems and get to those frags, I'll be okay. But I was able to complete the whole thing, then reset and get Vixen frags, 50 Vixen frags. So that was a good look. Anyway, I think that's all I wanted to say on it. Yeah, all right, those are all my notes. So thank you guys for watching. I drop these other videos every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So please like, please subscribe. If you don't like it, hit subscribe and hit dislike. I'm okay with that as well. Buy me a coffee, donate, help support the channel. I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for watching all the way through, and I'll see you next time.